how to check and adjust the horizontal output cathode current on a vintage color TV. I'm going to start by showing you some of the tools. And these are, I'm going to show you three ways that I do this. This is your adjustment tool. This is the same one for uh, IF, pretty much to adjust the uh, horizontal efficiency coil. This is a very handy item here. This is a cathode current test adapter. And these can be tough to find. And this is for a 6JE6. What this does is this plugs into the tube between the tube and socket and uh, lets you use these clip leads on your amp meter. It's also got a little test point there for the uh, grid to check grid drive. So this is just a digital multimeter. This is something that you would find probably at a ham swap meet or maybe on eBay. This is a little standalone. These are old. These are probably from the 30s up through the 50s. Little standalone milliamp meter, DC milliamp meter, and this one goes from uh, 0 to 300 milliamps. These were used in a lot of tube ham equipment to adjust plate current and cathode current. And a set of clip leads. So the first thing we want to do, I'm going to do this on a CTC 16, and I'm basically going to show you how to do this on RCA. Uh, Zenith is a little bit different. Some sets do not have an adjustment, but most all the RCA and RCA clones do. So the first thing I'm going to do is fire this set up, let it warm up and kind of stabilize for about 10 to 15 minutes. And one correction to that, one of the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my cathode current test adapter in between the horizontal output tube and socket before I let it warm up that way I don't burn myself and you can see the set warming up here I'm on the uh, DC 400 milliamp scale the reason why it's important to do this is, is that as the sets age and the capacitors in that change value this is a tuned circuit that will lose its tuning I need to be readjusted and this basically minimizes heat and wasted energy through the flyback and horizontal output tube. And we want to do this for maximum life of those components. So we're only at 180 milliamps. Now on this type of set that uses a 6GE6 Recommended uh, is about 220, 220 milliamps. Anything over that, you're really overheating the flyback. So I'm going to let this run for about 10 minutes and we'll come back. Okay, coming back a few minutes later, about 15 minutes later, it's dropped a little bit, but not much. Now on most RCA and RCA clones, this is the horizontal efficiency coil. What we want to do, and be very careful because you can burn yourself multiple ways, is get this in here. You see I have a yellow stripe on my tool here so I can tell exactly how far I've gone. Sometimes these things will be stuck, which this one is. It's not a good thing. So I got a more rigid tool here and broke this loose. You want to be very careful with this. You can, you can, uh, if you break that thing off, you're going to really be unhappy. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this to minimize cathode current.
and this is not really having any effect but you get the idea okay I'm gonna show you the second way to do this and maybe this is not a good set because that coil is not having any effect and that might be an indication of a bad capacitor in the tuned circuit uh, these are usually the capacitor but it looks like maybe they someone replaced them with disc caps at one time because they're usually the red drop type because disc caps are not temperature stable enough for this circuit so I don't know what's going on with that let me uh, find another set would uh, be a better demonstration we're going to show method number two on a Packard Bell set which is basically the same as an RCA we're going to do this using the plate cap current method this is not actually measuring cathode current it's measuring plate current but it's basically the same thing so look on the back of the meter and you can see there's a little plus there so we're going to hook one lead to plus hard to do this one handed and one to negative and let me set this down then what we're going to do is we're going to pull our horizontal plate cap off and we're going to hook the negative to the tube and we're going to hook the positive into the cap okay and very very stern warning here uh, this is semi-dangerous because there are 6,000 volt pulses and about 400 volts DC on this wire. And if you touch this, uh, your hand will start smoking where it makes contact. It will burn a hole, it will be very painful, and the house will smell like chicken or hot dogs. You do not, you have to be very careful using this method and you have to make sure that these wires stay clear and away from all grounds because it will burn right through the wire and uh, arc. I'm going to turn it on and on the Packard Bell you'll notice I am keeping my hands way away from this as far as I can on the Packard Bell, the cathode current adjustment is down here. Okay. So right there we're at about 160 milliamps, really, really low, but some of these later sets really, were really efficient. Okay, now what we want to do is twist this for a minimum current on the meter. I'm going to... You can see it's going up in that direction. going down, now it's going back up. So we want to find the middle spot 
where it's the lowest, which is about where it was. This set also has a cathode current test adapter built in, which is this little thing right here. You simply unplug that off of uh, there and put your meter in series with that. In fact, I can do that real quick just to verify. Okay, now I'm using my DMM, still in the 400 milliamp DC scale, and I'm using the set's built-in cathode current test point. Now, not all sets have this. In fact, in my experience, very few do. You pull that wire off the ground, and you connect the red of your meter there, and then you just ground your meter to the chassis. And this is the same basic thing. We try and get in here without smoking our fingers. Okay, put the yellow mark out, that way I can see where I'm turning it, and now we just adjust this for minimum. See that direction I'm going up, this direction I'm going down, so it looks like about 189 is about the lowest. I'll take that right there. This is a CTC 17. Very common. The same as basically the same as the 16. Uh, this is our horizontal efficiency coil right here. What I've done on this, which is probably the most convenient and economical way for someone that owns one or two sets is gone taking the chassis out when I had the chassis out for service you can see those two wires under the tube actually separated pulled the ground wire off the socket of the tube the cathode and installed two wires that are coming out right here and I have them connected up to this meter and again uh, after it's warmed up adjust the coil for minimum current and then when you're done simply just disconnect your meter oh, let me set this down. simply just disconnect the meter and um, twist these wires together or you could put a connector but simply just twist these wires together and kind of you know stick it down towards tape it down at the bottom of the chassis and you have a permanent cathode current test connector so this is the most economical the uh, socket adapter is the most convenient and the easiest and fastest and most dangerous is the checking the plate plate current with the little separate meter do not try and check the plate current with a DMM uh, it will go bye bye So the problem just surfaced with the uh, Delmonico receiver after it ran for about 20 minutes, which was uh, half the tube filaments went out. And um, I have a feeling it's a crusty tube socket. So what I'm going to do is I put my, I pulled the lovely 30 amp fuse out that I'm going to replace and I put my amp meter across this because the tubes tend to respond slowly uh, when they you can't really tell as they heat up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically touch each tube until I see the jump in the amp meter that'll tell me the filaments light up Ooh.
challenges to ordinary regulatory practices. At worst, they said, the court's decision reawakens the pre-New Deal threat of the court substituting judicial for democratic decision-making, where ordinary economic regulation... Looks like it's this, that one. Bloomberg, NPR News, Washington. It's time now for your letters and for one correction. Wimbledon is in full swing and I feel like it's that one right there. It's hard to tell. 